This is the story of Willow. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. In the dungeon of Nokmar Castle, a baby was born with a strange marking on its arm. The mother showed the midwife. The prophecy has come true. My child has the power to destroy the evil Queen Bavmorda. But if the Queen finds the baby, she'll kill it. Please, take my child far away. It's our only hope. The midwife placed the baby in a raft, then sent her floating downstream toward a land of little people called Nelwins. A few days later, two Nelwyn children found the raft and showed it to their father, an aspiring sorcerer named Willow Upgood. He cautioned his daughter. Don't go near that baby. It belongs to the Daikinis, the giant people who live upstream. But Dada, she's so cute. Can't we keep her? All right, Mims, but we mustn't tell anyone. The other Nelwins will think it's a bad omen. If anything terrible happens, they'll blame it on me. The next morning, Willow went to the Nelwyn Festival to show off his sorcery. For my first trick, I will make a pig disappear. He swirled his cloak and the animal vanished. Seconds later, it came leaping out of a hidden pocket. The people started to leave. Wait, come back. I have better tricks. Suddenly, Willow saw a ferocious dog-like creature tear through the crowd. It ran from hut to hut, tossing cradles and cribs aside. A death dog! It's searching for the Daikini baby! Willow raced home and grabbed the child, then rushed to the village sorcerer. Hi, Aldwin. We found this baby in the river. I should have brought her to you sooner. The wise man rattled some magical objects in his hands. The bones have spoken. You must take the child across the great river to the Daikini crossroads. Give the baby to the first Daikini you see, then hurry home. Carrying the baby, Willow made the long journey to the crossroads. This place is deserted, except for that strange-looking cage hanging from a scaffold. I wonder what's in it. Standing on tiptoe, he could only make out a heap of dirty rags. Suddenly, the rags moved. An arm reached out and yanked Willow into the air. From inside the cage, a Daikini man glared at him. Get me out of here, or die! I will! Anything you say, just put me down! On the ground, Willow looked up at the filthy prisoner. You would be the first Daikini I'd see. If I set you free, will you promise to take care of this baby? I'll look after her like she was my own. She'll be safe with me, Mad Martigan, the greatest swordsman who ever lived. Reluctantly, Willow freed the Daikini and handed him the child. Willow set out for home. He hadn't gone far when he saw an eagle being ridden by a tiny creature called a brownie. Willow couldn't believe what he saw in the bird's claws. The baby! I knew I shouldn't have trusted Mad Martigan! Racing after the eagle, Willow plunged into a pit and was knocked unconscious. When he came to, he was bound by ropes. Two brownies peered at him through the grass. The hatless one grinned. This is Rul, and I am Frangine, king of the world. <laughs> Frangine signaled to his friends, and they dragged Willow into the woods. Suddenly, the forest began to glow. The brownies cut Willow's ropes and backed off, huddling beneath a tree. A beautiful fairy appeared. Welcome to my kingdom. My name is Shalindria. I'm happy to meet you, Willow. The fairy faded, then reappeared with a Daikini baby. Her name is Elora Dannon. She has chosen you to be her guardian. But I have to go back to my family. They need me. All creatures of good heart need your help, Willow. Elora Dannon must survive. Only she can bring about the downfall of Queen Babmorda, whose powers are growing like an evil plague. Here. Take the baby and my wand to the sorceress, Finrazel. She will help you. Shalindria's light blazed. Then Willow and the baby were in darkness. Frangine spoke up. 
Rule and I will take you to Razelle. She was exiled to an island in a lake not far from here. On the way, Willow ran inside a tavern to find milk for Elora. He saw a man disguised in women's clothing. Mad Mardigan! Next time someone trusts you with a child, keep your eyes on it! Just then, Nakmar soldiers burst through the door. They were led by a young woman and a man in a death's head helmet. The girl pointed to the sinister figure. This is General Kane, and I'm Saoirse, Bab Morda's daughter. Where's the child? Mad Martigan grabbed Delora. Willow, follow me! Along with Frangine and Rool, they jumped out the window into a wagon. While Willow and the others hid in the back, Mad Martigan urged the horses forward, and they sped through the woods, outrunning Kale and his soldiers. Mad Martigan guided the wagon to the lake. This is as far as I go, Willow. I've got to find some people my own size. After Mad Martigan had gone, Willow left the baby with Frangine and Rule, then rowed a boat to the island, where a possum-like creature scurried down a tree and spoke to him. Stop! Who are you? Willow Ufgood, here to find the sorceress, Finn Rozelle. I'm Rozelle. One of that mortar's spells transformed me. Rozelle looked at the gnarled stick that Willow was carrying. Sir Lindria's wand. Then the prophecy must be true. Is the baby with you? She's across the lake with the brownies. Willow rode the sorceress to the other side of the lake and took the baby from Frangine. <coughs> Razelle perched on Willow's shoulder, gazing at the child. <coughs> it is a Laura Danon. We must take her to the kingdom of Tyr Asleen, where we will be safe from Bath Morda. As they turned to leave, Sorsha and Kale rode up with their soldiers. They dumped a prisoner on the ground. It was Mad Martigan. Sorry, Willow. They forced me to bring them here. Willow saw Sorsha eyeing the baby. No! You can't have her! The child must be taken to Nakmar. My mother's waiting. Sorsha's men seized the child, then took Willow and Razelle captive. The brownies hid in the bushes and watched the group take off, with Willow riding on Mad Martigan's shoulders. Sorsha led the caravan through the snow-covered mountains toward Nakmar. That night, she instructed her soldiers to lock up Willow and his friends, then took Elora to her tent. As soon as Sorsha was gone, Razelle turned to Willow. Try to transform me into my human form. Quickly! He pointed the wand at the little possum. Hither, green and ban, Clyde Luna knocked. The wand smoked. But Willow blundered. He turned Razelle into a bird. Willow rubbed his aching wrist. Oh, I'm sorry, Razelle. I'm not much of a sorcerer, but I can pick a lock. He freed himself and Mad Martigan, and the two of them hurried to the tent where Sorsha slept. As Mad Martigan tiptoed toward the baby, Willow kept watch at the door. Suddenly he saw Sorsha open her eyes. Mad Martigan, look out! As Sorsha lunged, Willow grabbed Elora and dashed outside. A second later, Mad Martigan appeared, holding Sorsha hostage. Mad Martigan stole two horses, and he and Willow rode through the snow with Sorsha and the baby. Razelle flew ahead of them. Hurry! Kale and his army are coming! This way! They fled the icy mountains and entered a valley carpeted with flowers. Willow grinned and pointed. Look! There's the castle of Tirasleen! As they galloped up the hill and into the castle, Mad Martigan's smile faded. All the people are frozen in crystal. They won't be able to help us. Willow wandered over to the largest statue, and Razelle landed on top of it. Sorsha hurried over. It's my father, the king. My mother told me he died years ago. This is her doing. Just then, the Nokmar soldiers stormed the castle. Sorsha turned against them, vowing to defend her father's kingdom. Mad Martigan used his sword to fend off a dozen Nokmar soldiers. Clutching the baby, Willow watched from the drawbridge. Mad Martigan, you are a great swordsman! Suddenly, the soldiers backed away. Mad Martigan turned and saw an enormous monster rising out of the moat, headed for Willow and the baby. He jumped on the monster's back and drove his sword into it. Ah! Willow, are you all right? Yes, but Kale took Elora. He's taking her to Bavmorda. 
Mad Martigan pulled Willow onto his horse, and they rode with Sorsha and Razel toward Nokmar. The landscape changed, and soon a volcanic fortress loomed before them. Willow turned to Razel. I've come all this way, and now Elora's going to die. Not if you find the strength to transform me. He concentrated, and Razel turned into a grotesque, half-formed creature. Don't give up, Willow. She became a deer. Then, at last, an elderly, once beautiful woman. Razel turned to Mad Martigan. Sasha will take Willow and me into the fortress. Keep a lookout for the soldiers. Inside the Queen's Tower, Razel faced Bermuda. I won't let you kill that child. Elora must triumph. I've already started the ritual. You can't stop me. Bavmorda waved her arm, and lightning shot through an opening in the roof. With her powerful magic, she trapped Brazel and Sorsha against the wall. Willow ran to Elora and grabbed her. Bavmorda turned to Willow. Who are you? I'm a great sorcerer, more powerful than you. The wicked queen grinned. Now you will see how strong I am. Place the child on the altar. No! Widow whipped his cape around and the baby disappeared. Babmorda flew into a rage and summoned another bolt of lightning, but this time it struck the evil queen herself. Ah! She burst into flame, then shriveled into a pile of ash. Razelle revived. Where is Alora Dannon? Willow picked up his cape and pointed to the secret pocket. <laughs> it was just my old disappearing pig trick. Willow, you did it. You saved the princess. The next day, Razelle presented him with a sacred book of magic and sent him home on a white pony. As Willow rode into the Nailwyn village, the joyous people mobbed their hero. The high old wind beamed. We're proud of you, Willow. You've become a true sorcerer, and you learned the most important lesson of all. The power of magic lies within you. That was the end of the story. If you'd like to hear it again, just turn the tape over.